ahead and get started. Um, call to order, uh, call to order City of Apache Junction Public Arts Commission at uh, 5.34 p.m. on February 8th, 2021. Um, with that, we'll go ahead and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, we'll go ahead and proceed to the roll call. Chair Bice. Present. Commissioner Coe. Commissioner Danford. Present. Commissioner Ham. Present. Commissioner Clett. Commissioner Nicholas. Yes, here. Vice Chair Steinberger. Yes. We have five present. Uh, Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. Thank you. All right. Uh, the first uh, consideration is um, approval of agenda. Consideration for approval of uh, today's agenda. Is there a motion? I'd like, this is Commissioner Ham. I'd like to make a motion to. Uh, I move that the Public Art Commission accept the agenda as presented. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. All right. And can I ask a question real quick before we take a vote? Yeah. Um, does the, I know Sydney, I had sent over some some uh, info on locations. I just wanted, I know I sent out this morning, it's kind of late, so I was just curious if that was included within the agenda today. It, it is, it's under work plan, uh, it's item number eight. It'll be presented under that item. All right, fantastic, thank you. Uh, so with that, uh, I guess we'll go to a roll call. Okay, um, I'll try it in case somebody called in. Commissioner Coe, Commissioner Danford. Yes. Commissioner Ham. Yes. Commissioner Klett. Commissioner Nicholas. Yes. Vice Chair Steinberger. Yes. Chair Bice. Yes. So we have five in favor, two not voting, not present. All right. And uh, we'll go ahead and move to the next agenda item. Um, approval of uh, the minutes from January 11th, 2021. Do I have a motion? I make a motion that we approve the minutes of the Public Arts Commission's meeting on uh, January 11th, 2021. Uh, call for a second. This is Commissioner Ham. I second. And uh, roll call. Uh, Commissioner Ham. Yes. Commissioner Klett, not present. Commissioner Nicholas. Yes. Vice Chair Steinberger. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Chair Bias. Yes. Commissioner Coe is not present. Commissioner Danford. Yes. Five in favor, two not voting, not present. All right. Thank you very much. All right, and we'll move then into the uh, next agenda item, announcement of artwork. Uh, announcement of artwork seen by commission members. Uh, Chair Bies, I, I believe this uh, submission was done by Commissioner Nicholas. Uh, Commissioner Nicholas, do you want to uh, expand on uh, on your submittal? Um, just that these are, you know, I was spending some time online looking at what the what different cities are doing, and I like the fact that these are not only are they contemporary sculptors, but they're pertinent to the area that they're represented in. And I thought these are just some good ideas and some things that, when the time comes for us to have public art, that we might consider some uh, subjects that are close to these. Excellent. And this is uh, available for our own review. Um, is the link provided in the uh, in the agenda? 
It is. For those uh, on the phone, uh, Commissioner Hammond, uh, Commissioner Klett, it's uh, under the hyperlink on sculptures, and then uh, it'll open up a PDF, and within that PDF, uh, there's a hyperlink to the website that we're currently viewing. Thank you. So great selection of uh, Western art, and this is all Mark Sublet is the artist for, the, for all of these? Is that... Uh, I think there's a... Yeah. Oh, no, it's a... Uh, he's the gallery. Artists. Okay. That's right. Yep. Um, different media. So. Great resource. Well, uh, thank you very much for the, for the resource, Commissioner Nicholas. Um, and something to, you know, as we continue to work through the work plan later on, you know, subject is definitely going to be uh, right up there for discussion, so... Absolutely, Chair. I, I think we're uh, going to start that conversation here shortly. Fantastic. All right. Well, if there's no additional comments, I'll go ahead and move to the uh, next agenda item, public hearings. I don't believe we have any public hearings on the agenda. Um, so we'll go ahead and move on to old business, uh, presentation and discussion on the work plan. Thank you, Chair Bies. Uh, so as discussed in our past meeting, uh, the work plan and items on the work plan are going to be uh, something consistent here going forward on, uh, for each of our meetings. Our next item on our work plan is establish a priority project list. Um, Chair Baez has actually already helped us uh, kind of get the ball rolling with this conversation. And uh, last week or so, he emailed a uh, number of sites that... Uh, that he thought were potential uh, sites for public art. Um, here is the map of those sites. Uh, I'm going to allow him to go over them. Um, you can ignore the colors on the map. It's the most important part is uh, just uh, the numbers on the map that that out outline uh, the general location of the uh, of the uh, for the proposed uh, art pieces. Uh, for those on the phone, uh, the map and the pictures. Uh, for this item were emailed to you about uh, 5 o'clock or so today. So if you check your email, uh, th that items, those items should be in, in, in your inbox. Thank you. I'm actually looking at those right now. Oh, perfect. Th thank you, Commissioner Ham. Uh, Chair Bies? Sure. Um, so, yeah, actually, if you can stick on your slide for a second, I'll start there. Um, because one thing that I want to begin with is just, you know, as I was looking at um, potential locations. I actually looked at the, uh, I believe this is the zoning map, right? It is, yes. Um, and so one thing I want to call special attention to here is the purple zone right in the middle, which is the, uh, the downtown mixed use zone. And it's also, I believe, indicated in our, um, in the, uh, the, general plan. the general plan as, you know, an area for, for development um, going forward. So you can see that there's kind of a selection of these kind of along uh, that air, you know, within that downtown area with it being kind of a focal point for future growth in the city. Um, the other thing I'll, I'll kind of note before we look at these individual locations is, you know, there's a lot of data available to us and to the public in general, um, that you can find online regarding traffic studies and, uh, you know, points of interest and focal points within town. Um, so, I would encourage all the commissioners to, you know, search that out and, um, you know, kind of use it to inform any proposals that you may have for potential locations going forward. Um, of particular use that I looked at for these locations were this zoning map. Uh, I believe there's a traffic study done um, probably in like 2012 maybe uh, that kind of highlighted, how, you know, where areas of major thoroughfare were, which you know, we're probably familiar just from um, kind of anecdotally being around town, but just is some support there for it. Uh, and then also, you know, one of the major events which would have just happened, I believe, is the Superstition Marathon. Um, so I also looked up the routes to that because I know that brings a lot of people into town. Um, and those are types of events that, uh, you know, seem to be encouraging kind of access to Apache Junction and, and bring a lot of eyeballs to our city, which um, you know, getting eyeballs on the art, I think, is uh, probably a pretty important consideration if we want to make an impact in the community. Um, so, 
<clears throat> again, just encouraging everyone to, you know, seek out the resources such as the zoning map, traffic studies, et cetera. Um, and if you do want to make or make proposals on any additional locations, this is by no means a comprehensive list. I just was channeling David Letterman and figured I'd give a top 10 um, <laughs> of, from my own personal opinion in, in no particular order. Uh, <clears throat> so I'll jump over to the um, slides real quick. Sydney, thank you for sharing the map, getting them all in one place. So I, um, I pulled kind of the five from my list just to kind of give a few bullet points again of what I was thinking. So this first one I mentioned uh, last meeting, fourth and Goldfield, have a little view of the cougar in the mountain, the shadow that's created during the uh, fall and spring equinox. Um, it's also along the marathon route. Uh, it's, you know, I, I don't list it here, but you know, there's some, um, there's a big elementary school nearby with a regional fire station there. Um, you know, so there's some like local landmarks nearby it. It's also considered kind of a scenic route. If you are familiar with Goldfield, you, you know that there's people pulled over taking photos really any time of the year, anytime there's clouds near the mountain, especially. Um, and then it's also looking at the, uh, um, the, the master planning for 2030, you know, that BLM land is kind of shown as a green, green belt around the city um, for future development and access um, in terms of, you know, recreation. Uh, that this is also adjacent to. So those adjacencies I feel like are kind of important to highlight when thinking about which locations would be good for public art. So this was one of my proposals, fourth and Goldfield, and I'll hit the other ones a little bit quicker. Um, another one, Silly Mountain Park and Garden. There's a great little botanical garden down there that um, you know probably has some potential. There's already, the, I showed a photo down here on the left of kind of the, uh, it's not a gate, but kind of entry into the, into the Silly Mart Mountain Garden. Um, it's already a great kind of educational resource for uh, kind of native plants and um, some botanical history of uh, the area. And then uh, on the right is a photo of the High Point Hike, which is um, you know, a great hike if you haven't done it up to the top of Silly Mountain, great views of Apache Junction and all the way on a clear day to downtown Phoenix. Um, again, kind of some of the highlights are, you know, gets a lot of traffic, great scenic views, existing infrastructure um, or, or re resources from the city and a, a definitely a point of interest. I'll move to the next one here. Uh, this one again is along the marathon route. So it's Goldfield and East Lost Dutchman. Um, this is an interesting one because right now that road currently dead ends into the BLM land. I don't know if there's, I mean, I assume that at some point that um, Lost Dutchman would connect through. We'd have, you know, there's no, I <laughs> see, <laughs> maybe. Uh, but <laughs> obviously, you know, there's that dead end may not be there forever, I guess is my point. But it's definitely a point of interest. Um, now, I know I've been up there, for example, um, you know, when there were, when there was fires going on this past summer, that was where I went to go get a look at Four Peaks because it's kind of a high point. You get a great view of the superstitions. Um, and I wasn't the only one, um, you know, it's kind of a congregating area for those uh, epic views. Um, and again, along the a marathon route. So, you know, you're, we're going to get some people by it uh, during that event. Um, moving on to the next one here. Uh, Next one was actually, if you can I'm jump surprised. forward again, I think you can click the arrow. That was pretty cool. <laughs> uh, I click back on this arrow, Sydney. Sorry. Sorry, you clicked. There you go. Okay, there you go. All right. <laughs> uh, this next location is Apache Trail in Delaware. So this is kind of right in, um, you know, what's can, you know, what I would kind of consider economic heart of Apache Junction. Lots of traffic going by. Um, located right along Apache Trail. Again, it's adjacency to other art and kind of, um, uh, you know, investment and beautification from the city of Apache Junction through the medians along Apache Trail is definitely a benefit. Um, and just the opportunity to kind of welcome people as they make their way through into town uh, to uh, really set kind of a tone for the, um, you know, could potentially set the tone for culture and kind of, 
um, a greeting to, to any visitors who might be uh, coming through. And then, uh, so yeah, I don't show it here, but you know, this is for those who kind of aren't familiar with this area. It's right near the Walmart and um, Starbucks and near the Harley Davidson um, center there. So lots of, uh, lots of uh, commercial activity, even though it's kind of outside that downtown zone, I think. And then um, on the next slide will be my last example for the day. So Prospector Park, uh, this one's kind of in a little farther removed, probably the most remote location, um, but obviously a source of investment from the city. Uh, definitely a place where people go to recreate, um, a, a big point of interest. And then you also have access to trailheads uh, to the BLM land to the north. Um, so, you know, potential for kind of connecting to that uh, uh, recreation and, and outdoorsy, uh, outdoorsy benefit that Apache Junction has to offer. So those are just five that I selected kind of at random. There's another five I can um, get into in further detail for a future meeting. Um, but at this point, I just wanted to kind of provide some examples for other members or uh, council members as well, if they want to, uh, um, if they want to submit potential locations or elaborate on any of the 10 that are provided here. Thank you, Sydney. Thank you, Chair Bice. Uh Do we want to open this up for discussion? This is Commissioner Ham. Um, I definitely agree that the Silly Mountain Botanical Garden and trail area would be one of the best spots for some art. I. I thought the city probably already had uh, that in their list of ideas since it is a big spot, but I definitely agree that is a good spot. Yeah, so just to elaborate on the other five that I didn't speak in detail to, I have listed here, and this is available to you for your reference to look into later. Uh, I have Idaho Road and US 60, so again, a popular junction um, lots of vehicular traffic. I have the library and multi-generational center. I have the proposed dog park listed. I have Superstition Shadows Park and Aquatic Center and Flatiron Community Park, um, all of which kind of have, you know, adjacent, important adjacencies and um, significance for the city. So uh, feel free to take a look at those at your leisure. Yeah, I've always thought that Idaho in the 60 was a very important spot right there because you have a lot of traffic going in and out of, you know, the, the whole Copper Corridor. You have people going out that way. Plus, you have a lot of people that come from the Ren Fair and people heading in from Phoenix. It's just a nice visible spot, and it's a nice introduction to the city. Commission, in, in tonight's uh, item for discussion uh, is really just an introduction uh, we're going to further, uh, we're going to bring this back for uh, next meeting and, and perhaps you'll have a, a little bit more time to go over these proposed locations. Perhaps you have uh, locations of your own that you want to submit to staff and that we could present and, uh, and continue to discuss this, this discussion at the uh, next meeting. Thank you, Sydney. I, um, yeah, so we'll, I think that's all I had for today and we'll, uh, we'll start here and start gathering locations as we go and then zeroing in on um, you know a potential location for our our first uh, work of art all right um, back to the work plan were there any additional um, any additional updates to be provided not at this time sure all right Okay, well, with that, we'll move on to, uh, well, I guess, any final statements on location? Okay, well, we'll go ahead and move on then to presentation and discussion on the logo. Commissioner Chair, Matt is going to give us his presentation. He's going to walk in here uh, any moment now. <laughs> no pressure, Matt. <laughs> Good evening, Commission members, Chairman Byes, fellow members. Um, I was given direction to work on basically number two and number four. 
I was recently informed though that um, there may not be the budget yet for things like shirts or posters or what have you, but at least you'll see it in context with a few of these things and we'll get your input. The folks uh, viewing online will have something sent to you as soon as we can. I just basically got this wrapped up over the weekend and formatted today to be at least semi-presentable. Um, as you can see, um, and I'll describe for the, the folks at home there, um, the two logos I've got presented on a mock-up of a couple of polo shirts, and it's a dark gray, almost black shirt, so I was able to bring back the yellow. Uh, but I know per your instructions, we're not gonna stick with the yellow for the most part. So we're gonna move through these very quickly. Um, a couple close-up views. I do believe these are a little, size-wise might be a little large, um, that I've seen other logos done on, on city, excuse me, on city shirts, so um, don't hold me to that. Um, but I do think it uh, sticks out very well. I do think it's very presentable. You'll see a couple other colors, including the Heather Gray and uh, fancy golf shirt here. Um, but I think we're, we're going to get to the letterhead stuff, where I think you're going to have your most immediate use with whatever you decide to choose. Um, each one individually. And feel free to tell me to go back and forth as, as needed. Um, one of the last things, of course, was the poster, trying to bring that. Um, but I know we've kind of made sure we uh, understood the scope of the commission's duties and that. So this may not come to fruition, but you never know. You never know. So, Commission, Matt was here uh, maybe a month or two ago, and he presented us these options. And, and you asked for him uh, to give uh, more examples of uh, this, this proposal logo uh, using a combination of your comments uh, getting rid of the yellow, perhaps using more black, uh, different fonts. Uh, and we're here, Matt is here before you tonight uh, to get uh, ad additional clarification and perhaps even an adoption of the logo. So I, I apologize for the, for the members on, on the phone. Uh, the file size was too large to email, uh, but I think we're going to come up with a creative solution probably tomorrow uh, or definitely by next next uh, meeting uh, for it to be sent out. Yeah, just a kind of a reminder of the um, um, some of the flexibility I encourage we build in. As you can see, uh, this one over here, that's black, but this one over here, the AJ is blue. I think that'll come into play if and when we can do various media um, as we move forward. So hopefully everyone will get a look at those and um, come back to Sydney and Sydney will pass it on to myself, I guess. That'd be appropriate, no? Yeah, I guess what I would propose is, um, yeah, if we have comments today that we can maybe provide those and then we make a future uh, agenda item for approval and integration, that way it's, you know, that way it's clear to the other members who aren't able to join us in person yeah. um, <laughs> what they're voting right. on. <laughs> yeah, no, no rush on this since it's going to hopefully be something we have longer rather than shorter it's it's the best to get that input for sure sure and to, to kick off a couple comments i um you know one thing you mentioned was the use of black versus yellow uh which you know i'm i'm thinking with the uh actually if you could go back to the previous example on the poster in this example if you had black versus yellow on the right hand side it almost makes sense to be able to make the black um, interchangeable with yellow so that depending on the contrast of the background you can do one or the other and it's kind of a standard that can be replicated almost anywhere right right um, the other thing I like about the right hand logo here and that, you know it's kind of consistent through the other examples you gave this may just be the the architect in me wanting to be organized but that it's <laughs> color it's banded right so where where it may I think it makes it a little more legible and a little easier to read and having kind of each line color coded, yeah, um, and, and you know provides kind of a little bit better legibility. Um, so those are kind of my first two okay. two thoughts. Uh, but yeah, so the what I see on the right, I'm, um, you know, I'm pretty excited about. I was actually going the opposite way. I like the one on the left. <laughs> when I, when I saw it on all the different media, I just thought I thought the the 
vertical alignment looked better in the space on the examples that we saw. I, I was a little uncomfortable with, with the horizontal alignment on the shirts and whatever. It might look good on a hat. And the other thing I'm thinking of is when we get to that point, wouldn't it be wonderful to have banners hanging throughout the city? And if you put that one on the left on a banner, that'll really have some impact. It'll really look nice. So rather than a flag talking a banner like this and then the vertical, mm -hmm. the vertical one. So that's the one I like. I'm going to break tradition here and agree with Liz. <laughs> <laughs> I like the one on the left better, too. This is Commissioner Ham. Um, so I actually think both, both options are good depending on the medium because I feel the option on the right would actually serve best on things like letterheads, on, uh, as they said, a sh like a hat or something, but I feel the one on the right is the more official looking of the two. That's my personal opinion. We're artists. We don't need to be official looking. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the, you know, this is a great example to see them side by side. I really, I really appreciate this. Um, and, you know, looking at the one on the left, uh, because I mean, they're, they're both good options. I don't think there's a bad option here. Um, but kind of harking back to my previous comment where it's, you know, color coded by band at least, where we have the public art in cyan versus magenta. Um, I'm curious kind of what the commission's thoughts are there. If you could take, you know, if there's a preference on having kind of the, the multicolored public art or, you know, and this is just a, a brainstorm here, but if you had magenta public art and blue city of Apache Junction, you could still have that color coding that could be easily flipped depending on the medium Yep. you know, that it, that the background is on. Yes, and, and like I said, the, I'm keeping the yellow and it's not in there, but just in case, it, it's right. there and I think people will kind of grasp. I'm hoping, sometimes I reach for my, my friends to understand where I'm going. Uh, with the, the C, you know, the cyan magenta yellow, you know, the basic print, um, what I, I just thought was appropriate. So yes, we can definitely, as opposed to alternating the colors, yeah, whatever, whatever would be. Um, if you wanted to say, hey, the basic one we see on all our letterheads is going to be this. Public art in that color, the cyan, and then the black. So we have magenta. It, it would depend on the medium, but if you wanted to say for our letterhead, it's this as you communicate with vendors and what have you. I really like the, the two colors with public art. Mm -hmm. To me, it just it, it looks to use a cliche, it looks more artsy to me. <laughs> so the, yeah, the way the and what, what I see when I look at that is, yeah, public art commission. It stands out to me. So, And as I said, I did preface this by saying it may just be my organizational OCD. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm one of those artists that likes to use every color on the palette. So, This is Commissioner Ham. I'm going to just kind of go with both of your ideas and... Um, it, what if there you had like the public art for in the magenta, the city of Apache Junction, and the cyan on the, and then or uh, yeah, the cyan, and then uh, the commission part was a blend. The commission part like, was uh, what? Like transition. Meaning it would be a, uh, what color would you would you want to choose that or did you say blend? So you have the magenta on the top, oh. the cyan on the bottom, and you have that uh, that uh, that transition, like so, uh, like a gradient, gradient between. Mm. Yeah. So I don't know if this. I know I had done that with. I had done some gradients with the. Did you? Do we see that? We didn't. Okay. We'd have to see how well it can reproduce on the different, with different media. We yeah. I mean, it sounds, it's, it's yeah. a good idea, but I don't know how it would look. Yeah, I could see that being a little complicated too, because it, I know that in my experience, printing gradients, it depends on the quality of the printer as well, pretty significantly. Mm -hmm. So um, that would, that would have to be taken into consideration as well. Um, in terms of direction to walk away with, because I know we've been kind of Throwing a lot of spaghetti at the wall at you. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um, 
<clears throat> I guess, is there a, uh, is there something that we'd, that we'd like to see, assuming that we view this next time for approval, um, is there any kind of formal direction that we would like to agree upon to provide or otherwise we can just give general feedback? This is Commissioner Ham. I would personally prefer to go more towards the option on the right of the two, maybe doing the uh, uh, doing public the words public and art in the two different colors, uh, as was pointed out before. Um, otherwise, I'm good with any other options the rest of the commission has. Quick question, I suppose. Uh, so is the intent that we would have kind of a letterhead for kind of formal um, like letters and RFPs, that kind of thing, and then a more graphic one that would be used in more like media or like you were saying, Liz, banners or, you know, myriad of other ways, but kind of a more formal and then a more graphic, in which case, uh, you know, we could really use, I, what I'm hearing is that the one on the right would be more formal and used for letterhead, particularly, and then, you know, pretty much everything else would be more graphic on the left. Um, either that or we would have one graphic that we would use everywhere, right? So, um, I mean, I, I, I tend to think that the one, I mean, this, again, my opinion, but the one on the right, I think, fits a little nice, more nicely in terms of like an email signature or formal correspondence. The one on the left absolutely is versatile in terms of its graphic, uh, graphic uses, um, posters, banners, advertisements, social media, that kind of thing, right? Well, here's a suggestion. I mean, if, if you're talking about using a vertical one for certain things and then the horizontal one for, for other things, for other purposes, and I see your point, especially on letterhead or as an email signature, that makes a lot of sense. What I would suggest we do, because I, again, I really like the one on the left as far as, uh, I like the typeface, I like the way the, the colors are divided up. We use the, we have a secondary logo that has the horizontal format but we use the same, that condensed typeface that we use in the one on the left, and we break up the colors the way we have on the left, but we just have it in a horizontal format. Because you don't want them to look like two different logos. Right. They have right. to relate to each other. I, I, I agree, yeah. and that was actually kind of where um, I think we were headed to, is you know, just having one, uh, one typeface, one set of colors that's consistent through both, right? Okay. And I, I understand we're looking at options here. That's the whole point. So <laughs> no, no, it's, it's uh, I guess, is there, should we... It sounds like there may be a bit of a split on the uh, on the commission on which they prefer. Do we want to take a quick vote on whether we want to have the public art as uh, you know two colors, cyan magenta, or whether we want to have the colors banded as similar on the right, and then whatever we agree to would be uh, presented to us in the future in both formats. Yeah. So I guess it's a Quick, quick. It's more of a consensus rather than a vote. Right. We don't consensus, have it as a vote item. But what I heard was you were going to go with two different logos for two different types of uses, but <clears throat> the one on the left would be kind of converted to the right. So you might have a blue AJ with the red down below, and then the word public would be blue, the word art might be red, and then so... And use the condensed typeface. And use the yeah. condensed Correct. typeface. Correct. Same typeface, color scheme. Mm -hmm. It's just also arranging it horizontally. Take the one at the left and plug it in over here. Yeah. With, mm -hmm. the, with the color changes. Mm -hmm. that, this, yeah. that sounds about uh, where I was uh, agreeing with as well. Okay. I can do that. Um, so one of the uses outside of letterhead will be uh, for like tonight's meeting. The next time we have it and we're all agreed the um that'll be i put a logo up for the live stream because we start the live stream five minutes before mm -hmm. so i need something up there so right now there's just basically a slide with the date on it 
and I would change that to reflect what we ultimately end up for that purpose. And then after that, it's-, it's So we'll have this on the agenda for next month to vote on it, and then we could start putting it on the website, on the graphics that, where the public art is already, just start using it. Yeah, yeah. for the, the map and finder and things like that. Yeah. Sounds good. Anything else? All right. Okay. Well, if we uh, thank you. Yeah, if we have a consensus, I think we, th that's the that's the way we go. Is there any? I guess the question to the commission is: Is there? Do we have that consensus that we want to adopt the one on the left and the two different formats? Get I agree. Yes, you get a yes from me. Yes, here. Okay. All right, okay. Jared. I agree. That'll do it. Okay. <laughs> Katrina, you still with us? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you'll get to see it next month and vote on it, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll send it out ahead of time. Yes. Yeah, for, that, for sure. Okay, thank you, Commission members. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. All right. Well, great, lively discussion. I appreciate everyone's participation there. Um, so we'll go ahead and move on in the agenda if there's no other comments to new business. I don't think we have any new business nope. for today. Nope. Um, information and reports? Nope, not at this time. All right, and a staff report. Uh, the presentation and discussion on the American Planning Association's Public Art Life Cycle Part Two Maintenance to Mayhem webinar. Yeah, again, just an FYI, I know some of you watched the first one. This was the one I had mentioned that was gonna come out in January, and it did. So um, if anyone didn't see the first one, let me or Sydney know. We can get you the link to the first one. They're both on that uh, Ohio American Planning Association website. So the first one was kind of nuts and bolts about arts commissions, um, and this is the second one um, that really talks about um, the life, life cycle part two, I guess. I haven't seen it yet, but I'll probably watch it one of these days soon. So I don't know if anybody already had a chance to watch it, but um, the first one was pretty decent, I thought. So we thought we'd share this. Great, yeah, thank you very much. I, I mean, I would highly recommend the first one to anyone who hasn't watched it yet. And um, I mean, it's very informative. It really does go through a lot of the logistical um, elements of public art. It kind of helps to define the role of public art in, in communities. Um, so I'm really interested to hear what uh, the part two is all about. Thank you for that resource. Um, okay, so uh, moving on then to call for future agenda items. So wanna be the logo for sure, right? Yes, uh, and the work plan for the art locations. Right, yeah, additional, uh, additional locations. And, just want to reiterate there again if anyone has any additional proposals um sydney i believe the process is just to email those over ahead of time yes uh not necessary to put slides together but the super bowl was boring yesterday so <laughs> <laughs> uh and then we do have a um suggestion that sydney and i have been working with liz langenbach uh, parks and rec director to come back and talk about the dog park and we had intended to put that on tonight but we I, whatever, we spaced it out. So, and she's busy on March 8th, so April. Liz will come back and talk about uh, Dog Park and what some ideas, and I think she's been asking the park board for their in input as well. So that'll be in April, just right. FYI more, more so. Okay, so I think we have, uh, and then do we have a, in, in regards to the work plan, that's under old business, but is there anything in particular that we need to advance on the work plan that would need to be considered a new, that would need to be considered new business? No, the work plan would just be considered old business. Okay. All right, and I'll open it up to the uh, commission. Any, any additional future agenda items? Uh, I guess with that, we'll move forward to so, uh, selection of meeting dates, times, location, and purpose. 
Uh, right. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say this is Commissioner Ham. I move that the Public Art Commission hold a regular meeting on March 8th, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. in the City Council Chambers located at 300 East Superstition Boulevard. Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll roll call. Uh, Commissioner Nicholas. Yes. Uh, Vice Chair Steinberger. Yes. Chair Byes. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Danford. Yes. Commissioner Ham. Yes. Motion's approved, Mr. Chair. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and adjourn until next month. Uh, it is, let's see here, 6.15 on the dot. Uh, thank you very much for your time, everybody.